Hey, welcome back to Income Trading 101. Today is Sunday, April the 11th. I wanted to take a look at One Inch. So One Inch is a is one of the exchanges. Uh, it's actually an aggregator uh, that tries to find the best price for uh, for different uh, trades uh, across various uh, various trading platforms. And they released their token uh, back in late December of the, of 2020. And you can see it had a strong, uh, strong move on the first day, came on back and it's kind of, sort of grinded higher and then had a nice pop pulled back and apparently has bat is back up near where it used to be uh, as far as making a uh, retesting highs and made even a, a slightly higher high. So uh, one of the things that makes this interesting, too, from a fundamental standpoint, is the fact that it just got listed uh, on Coinbase uh, not too long ago, early this week. So. Uh, we'll see how this how this goes, but I'm using this is one inch versus the U.S. dollar, uh, which is not the main. Uh, it's not been the main uh, currency exchange for it, but I like to look at things versus the dollar just to get a, a better feel for where things are since I'm based in the U.S. and think in terms of the dollar. So that all being said, let's just take a quick look at this short amount of data and. You guys know, uh, or maybe if you if you followed along with me, I've said before that when you're dealing with uh, an asset that doesn't have much price history on the daily standpoint, you certainly can analyze the the you know hourly, minute. Uh, you can find ways to get more data just to give you a better feel of how this thing is moving, uh, even if it doesn't have a, a a large amount of data. But let's go ahead and look at some moving averages. Uh, just to get a sense of where this is. I'm going to do my usual thing. Uh, you guys know if you've been with me for a little bit, I like to use the 10, the 20, and the 60 day. Um, that is typically uh, based on equities uh, because I have my background in trading uh, stock and futures. But um, I found that it still gives me some data that's valuable in the crypto space as well. And uh, since you can't trade the others on the weekend and crypto doesn't sleep, I prefer looking at crypto on weekends. So um, you can see right off the bat at the daily range, um, there isn't a long, there isn't enough history to create the 60 day, which is this yellow. Uh, but you do see how the moving averages responded um, both to the pullback, like I like to use the shorter time frames to to get involved uh, to enter a trade, and I like to use the uh, longer term time frames to exit the trade. And so, even in this scenario, um, maybe you would set a rule like you know either uh, short the stock, like exit the, the the asset, not the stock, as it exit the asset when one of the uh, bars goes beyond or approaches the longer term, the tw the midterm, really, the 20 day um, moving average. There are a number of ways to, to trade this, but at the end of the day right now, it looks like all three averages are in line uh, with the 10 day above the 20, which is above the 60. Um, but I imagine that's gonna change when we analyze uh, the the shorter time frames, the last few, the, act the price action over the last few days. So. Sure enough, over the last few days, we've seen more of a downward trend uh, in price action. So this is why I like uh, looking at uh, hourly data and even going lower than that. So you see a nice, that's a lovely uh, downward trend that has been created and seems to be ongoing. Um, let's take a look at this at the 30 minute, see if that confirms it's still a downward trend. And I like taking it lower because sometimes you'll see that a, a, a an upward trend is beginning. So look at this. Right now at the 15 minute level, you actually have some congestion because the 10 is between the red and the 20. I'll expand this out if you can't currently see it. This is what I mean when I say congestion. It's when they're out of order. So you got the 60, the 10, and the 20. So they're not in line. And that's an indication that we might be entering a period where this, uh, where the this interim, this smaller downward move, might be about ready to pop and uh, and make a newer a newer high. So let's pull this back out to the daily. My goal with technical analysis is always to have a good understanding of where the major trend is, 
the major trend is clearly going higher. Uh, but that being said, you still need to be aware of what's happening. So you don't want to buy this and sustain a major loss that would force you to actually exit the trade just before it turns and goes higher the direction you thought. So let's look at the MACD to see if we get any sort of indication for momentum. I'm sure on the daily it's going to be as expected. Uh, we had a little bit of a pullback. I'm surprised that this even came lower than the zero line um, on that short. And now it's just sort of hovering around. We haven't seen a big pop uh, to pull higher. And that's because essentially so much of that looks flat. This period between late February and uh, we'll call it uh, early April, um, relatively trade it within a range. And so that'll make the MACD on the daily really, really kind of flat as well. Let's look at the hourly. So on the hourly, you got a nice crossover on April 8th. That was a few days ago. Uh, crossed again there. Um, if you were to wait until this went negative, which would have happened on April the 9th, let's say you were to enter on the 10th somewhere, if you had sold around 590, you'd be up, you know, 30 cents or so, but nothing big. And here at the hourly, we are we already are seeing a cross below the uh, below the zero line indicating that we might be seeing some upward movement movement here soon. Let's look at the okay, so on the 30 minute, we crossed the zero line back on the ninth just as well. But we've had a couple false starts. We had a, a cross on the 10th uh, below the zero line of both the MACD, MACD crossing the signal line, but then it went back. And then we saw another cross, and it didn't quite go positive, and it pulled on back. And we see another cross here. So I wouldn't trust this until it goes fully above, above the zero line. Um, and part of the reason I look at the MACD the way I do is just I've used it for a while. And you get a, a good sense of how this thing works and what doesn't work. Here on the 15 minute, you see a nice cross, uh, a sell signal here on the 10th, and then a buy signal on the 11th. If this goes positive, that would be my first indication with the MACD that this thing might be really changing course. Um, I feel like the uh, because the moving average also was indicating that a change is coming in this, um, this could actually be, we could get this move actually today. And you can see how this has played out. I mean, the 15-minute MACD has actually done a nice job, um, like this little cross here going back negative and pulling lower. And then you would have had a crossover for a buy signal. The problem is if you wait it, on this one for it to go positive you actually would have you would have missed I guess you would have only missed about 20 cents um, and and then it turned around and crossed even so arguably in the 15 minute the MACD might be a little too sensitive but I do think um, it's worth taking a look at and certainly the 30 minute I like that it's uh, a little more cautious and the one hour um, as well I think if this one hour pulls up and crosses the positive line that might be uh, a good indication of uh, of when to get back into uh, one inch if you have not already considered it so let's get rid of the MACD indicator and we're not going to take a look at the Fibonacci retracement because the last retrace uh, the last top uh, and pullback actually got got met I mean we, we went higher we went above it so I'm just gonna draw that line so here you can see that we did actually cross the previous high, but we didn't manage to close above it. Um, we came on off it. So that might end up being a resistance level. Um, but I would fully expect, I would fully expect uh, this, this uh, asset to try and, and test that again. We'll draw another little line here because we've got um, nice upward action coming in here as well pull that back even a little bit I mean this is this is nice I think this is pulling for a higher a much higher um, uh, asset value so certainly would look to own uh, one inch versus selling it um, anytime soon I mean that's 
that's nice. The other reason, the other thing I like about buying this uh, is that the overall, the overall sentiment in this has been upwards, right? So we've had some some strong up moves in this in this asset. We obviously have had some pullback too, but I think the up move, the upward, uh, I think the strength is on the is on the upside here, and so I would definitely look. I'd be more into buying than selling um, this for sure. So that's it. I've used one inch. I've traded on it. Uh, I do not own this token, uh, just for full disclosure, um, but it's one that I am looking at. So hey, if you own it or trade it right now, feel free to leave a comment and definitely uh, subscribe to the video or subscribe to this channel. I appreciate you guys watching these videos. And if there's some other uh, tokens or coins or companies or anything that you'd like to see me cover, go ahead and leave it in the comments and I'll uh, make a list and make sure I, I cover those too. All right. Hope you're having a great weekend. Happy trading.